Hey, how's it going? Good to have you back. And today we continue with the Skyrim mob reviews. And what we're looking at today is Halfenheim, which is a medium sized player home located on the shoreline near Solitude Farms and right next to Solitude Docks. So uh, before you install it, make sure you don't have any mods in this area because that could cause conflict. This mod was produced by Archon Entertainment and ported by several other modders. The mod is available on PC and Xbox One and as far as I know, sadly not the PS4. Links to the mod are included in the description. Now this is a great home for any build but not suitable for families. There's a quest to actually get this house and it can be quite tricky in parts. The mod author has included it so you have to work to get this home. So I'll not include any details on how you get it in this video. But what I will do is upload to an unlisted link a quick walkthrough if you get stuck. Just DM me and tell me what you've done to solve the quest and I'll send you the link. Now a quick FYI, I was attacked by a bear and wolves when I first arrived here and two frostbite spiders when I entered the home. The second time I arrived nothing outside and only one baby frostbite when I went inside the house. So just be aware of that. Now let's crack on. So first things first we have to uh, look in this body and you'll find a letter from Falk Firebrand. So we just quickly look at the body. Nothing particularly interesting there. So grab the letter. And let's go down and find it and read it. Right, yeah, there you go. And you get the key. And the quest starts. Go to Harfenheim. I won't bother reading it to you. You can uh, pause the video if you like or just read it on the body when you actually get here. Okay, so all we do now is just head up into the home. As I said before, you'll probably be attacked by a frostbite spider or several of them. Depends on the RNG gods. Uh, when you actually enter the property, it's going to be an absolute ruin. And the only thing that will be around is the ghost of the artist that formerly owned the property. The one that Firebrand wants you to get rid of. As you see, it's absolutely desolate. So what you've got to do now is do the quest, which as I said, I will leave a link to. Um, sorry, I won't leave a link. DM me and I'll send you a link to an unlisted video which shows you how to do it. But try and do it because that's what the mod author intended you to do. So anyway, once you've done the quest, you're home will be ready and fully furnished and waiting for you. I'll stop the burbling and I'll let the video do the talking for a while. I think you can see straight away that this is an exceptionally well-crafted mod. I believe it was actually made for a competition and um, I'm not sure how it did in that competition. But it must have come pretty high up because it's exceptional quality. The lighting is fantastic. The attention to detail is fantastic.
Okay, now you've got a pretty much idea of the quality of the mod, let's go on a little walkabout and see exactly what this home has to offer you as a player. So there's lots of little plant plots around with um, respawnable uh, plant life. Tables and chairs, lots of static items as well, which is always good. So if you accidentally do a shout, everything doesn't get thrown absolutely everywhere. It's an incredibly pleasant place to be this, actually. Absolutely superb. And we come upstairs into the bedroom. You've got a cooking pot in your bedroom. I don't know why you'd have it in your bedroom, but you do. Uh, sadly, there's no oven here, um, which is a real shame. As I mentioned before, you want to make garlic bread for curing vampirism. There's uh, a fair amount of chests you can store your items in. And at the end there, there's three uh, mannequins and uh, some weapon plaques. If I'm going to be hypercritical of this property, um, there isn't a huge... There's enough storage. Uh, there's not a huge amount. And the reason why that is a bit of an issue for me is because I'm a little bit OCD and I like to have everything organised into separate um, uh, boxes. So a box of saws, box of this, a box of that. It's just how my little mind works, sadly. So there's an overview here. It's a great little space. Aesthetically, it's so pleasing and it works well as a bedroom. Now, it's worth noting as well, there's no room for your follower and clearly there's no room for a family so this is well your follower doesn't really matter but uh, yeah if you can role play as a family person this definitely isn't the home for you so wandering through uh, we've got a few places set uh, a few storage uh, uh, places um, strong boxes and a place where you can display your dragon mask And a nice little dining area with a, actually kind of a cute little waterfall there. Actually a nice little feature there. An inside waterfall. And moving on. We'll go to the crafting room. This is really well done. I'll let the video do the talking for a bit. This is a beautifully made room with absolutely everything you're going to need. Uh, an alchemy table, enchanting table and a staff enchanter, usable bookshelves. The only small fault I would mention is there isn't quite enough storage space beside each table. Well, not for me anyway, but they are perfectly usable. And there you go, one of the most excellent crafting rooms I've seen. I said, apart from the minor little thing about the storage, what a great room. Seriously, well done mod author, fantastic. Okay, so continuing, we'll have another little wander. And you come down here, there's another little table some weapon racks at the far end, and some display cases as well. And the lighting in this place is just right. Not too bright, and it's not too dark. 
and it really is very atmospheric and if you do download this mod and use it I think you're going to be really really happy okay let's go and have a look at the smithing area which is outside and there's solitude up there you can see this is why this is one of my favourite areas and we come up to a shrine of Dabella. Which is obviously the theme of this home. And then we come up to the smithing area. We've got the smelter outside. And in here, we all have the smithing gear. Sorry, the smithing stuff. So we got the workbench, we got the forge, everything you need. The grinder, tanning rack. Again, one little quibble I would have. There's only one chest, a secure chest, and it's absolutely fine. It's just for me personally. I would have, I'd rather have lots of chests so I can organise organise myself properly. But that's my issue, not the mod authors. <laughs> There you go, what a fantastic area, really, everything's close by. Okay, that's pretty much it. I will leave you with some long shots, and I'll just give you my final summary. This is a fantastic player home in a really, really nice area. The attention to detail is second to none. Um, it is a single player home. Uh, you get away with a follower, but definitely not a family. If you play in that style, then you can't get much better than this property. It's fantastic. It hasn't got all the bells and whistles like the armories and display cases for all your trophies. But as a usable player home, yeah, this is right up there with the best of them. Congratulations to the mod author. They've done a fantastic job. Anyway, I'll leave you some parting shots. See you later, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, please leave a like, leave a comment and hit the bell next to the subscribe button, after you subscribed obviously, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter. See you later.